In this video lecture, we will look at the center of mass and torque. This will cover sections 7.5 in your textbook and 9.1 and 2. So we will be skipping around a little bit. Center of mass is a pretty straightforward concept. It depends on the individual masses involved. So think of something like a mobile where you have different masses hanging from strings. The center of mass, the position of that center of mass, depends on the mass and each and where that mass is in relation to some original origin point. Depend when setting up your system, it may be more helpful to set either the center of mass as the origin or the mass of one of the other objects as the origin. This can be helpful in moving and solving a problem. Another concept is the center of gravity. And in that case, you just replace the mass with the weight. So mass one would become weight one for the center of gravity. Not a huge difference. Here are just some quick pictures of mobiles so that you can kind of get an understanding of how the center of mass matters. We've all tried opening a door before. Some of us have even succeeded. When you want to apply a force to open a door, it's best to apply that force perpendicular to the surface of the door as far away from the hinge as possible, as shown in the diagram all the way to the left. If you apply the force at, let's say, non-perpendicular at some angle, the force will not do as good a job as opening up the door. If you apply the door, the force along the, the axis of the hinge or the door, it will not move at all. This is due to torque. Torque is, measures the effectiveness, effectiveness of a force causing an object to rotate or pivot. Torque, once again, is the rotational equivalent of a force. I say that as it's the rotational equivalent of a force. Tau, or lowercase tau, is torque. R stands for the radius um, that the force is applied to. That's from the, the distance from the pivot point. And F sine theta refers to the force that's applied. Now, if the force is perpendicular to the radius of the lever arm, it will be a maximum amount of force. If we're at zero degrees, that we, there we would have a minimum amount of force. The AP formula seems very different from the book formula. It's not really. The one that you saw before was the AP formula. The book defines the lever arm as our L in a little different form. Just trust me, use the AP formula. It's easier. It's simpler. I don't like how the book does it. Done. Next problem. When an object's in equilibrium, there is zero acceleration, whether it be in the x-axis, y-axis, or there's no rotational acceleration overall. That acceleration is zero. What could this mean? This means that all the net forces are equal to zero. If acceleration is equal to zero, the net force must be equal to zero. Therefore, if the acceleration of an object, if it's at rest, the torque must be equal to zero. Here's a simple and very common problem. A fireman or some object is standing on a ladder. The goal is to find, or the problem is to find, what is the force of friction between the ladder and the ground? Or at what point does the ladder begin to slide out due to overcoming the force of friction? First, we need to choose an axis of rotation. It could be anywhere. We could set it in the middle of the ladder. We could set it at the side up against the building. We can set it at the edge of the ground. We can put it at any one of the steps. The, just do something that's easy. Probably if we set the rotation of axis at the bottom of the ladder, it's going to make this problem much easier. Let's now look at the forces. And you know we love our free body diagrams. 
Here's a kind of free body diagram. It's not a true free body diagram, but it shows the individual forces acting on the ladder. Here we have the weight of the ladder, WL, the weight of the fireman, WF. P is the normal force from the building acting on the ladder. GY would be the normal force due to the ground. And GX is the force on the ground. It's acting, it's going to oppose the motion of the ladder. GX would be the frictional force. Choosing the rotation, the axis of rotation, we want to make it convenient. Picking random spots along the ladder, we'd have five different torque forces, or five different torques. If we look at the pivot point, at the bottom where the ladder touches the ground, we would only be concerned with three other torques. That would be the weight of the ladder, the weight of the fireman, and the normal force acting from the wall on the ladder. In doing this, we really only have to find a way to set our axis or our tor net torque, excuse me, equal to zero because we want this to remain at rest. The other idea is that the force of friction will be equal to the normal force coming off of the wall. This is because all the forces in the x direction must also sum to zero. All the forces in the y direction must sum to zero if it's at equilibrium. Here, our axis of rotation is shown. We chose it at the bottom where the ladder touches the ground. We have the weight of the fireman directed downwards, and the weight of the ladder directed also downwards, and we have the normal force of the building directed in a horizontal direction. In order to solve for the normal force, we would want to set the net torque equal to zero, so summing up all the different torques. Again, I don't like how the book does it with the length of L, and that's it. Use the angle that the force is directed at relative to the axis, which in this case would be 40 degrees because we know that the ladder is standing at a 50 degree angle, and use the radius or the length down the ladder arm that it would find. Either way, it's the same calculation when you plug it into your calculator and it should yield you the same answer. Once again, all the forces must balance out. Equilibrium is going to be maintained in both dimensions. So from this, we know that the weight of the ladder and the weight of the fireman is equal to the normal force provided by the ground, and the frictional force in the horizontal direction is equal to the normal force from the building on the ladder, P. Use this idea to solve for our sample problem on the next page. A 90 kilogram fireman is standing on a 10 kilogram ladder, which is at an angle of 50 degrees with the horizontal. What is the necessary force of friction to keep the ladder from sliding outward? I'd like for you to calculate that along with the next problem on the next page. My second problem for you tonight is you've seen that big wooden board that I have in the back of my classroom. Your goal is to figure out how you can determine the mass of the board, come up with any method to try and figure this out. Part of the reason we're doing this now for homework is because of the missed classes next week and we get to get cut out of our lab. We we'll try and do it Monday, but we'll see. Um, we'll actually get to test your theories. So go for it. Have fun tonight with this. Come up with any idea. Yes, this is open-ended. Good luck with that. Enjoy.